Okay, I guess I'm going to kick it off then. Uh, hi, I'm Mike Coleman. I'm a developer advocate on the uh, Anthos and GKE teams at Google. And we're going to talk today uh, a little bit about how you can use Anthos Service Mesh to manage um, distributed services. So we're going to we're going to do a, a lab where we've got a couple of clusters in a couple of different regions, and uh, you're going to set up an application to run across those clusters, configure ingress into those clusters, and then apply some security policies to ensure that you are um, operating appropriately. And then I believe we're going to wrap up with taking a look at some of the integrated dashboards and functionality. So that's what we're going to walk through. Uh, this first section, I'm going to take you through. Uh, a little bit about what Anthos Service Mesh is and why we built it and uh, um, how it works on Google Cloud. And then Christine's going to join in um, and talk a little bit about the actual infrastructure that's been provisioned for you that you're going to that you're going to utilize. Then we're going to hand over to Nim. I should probably actually. Uh, oh, yeah. Before we begin, make sure you go to Google Solutions .com and log in with the account you registered with. Um, we have, a, there's a message in the chat with that link as well. So make sure you do that, um, especially during this time when I'm just yammering, that's a good time to do that. So we, uh, so as I said, I'm gonna kick off with a little description of the technology we're using. Christine's gonna talk about the architecture uh, of the lab and uh, kind of the starting state, ending state. Nim's gonna take you through um, getting the, the mesh deployed, connected up, configuring ingress, deploying the application. And then Matthew's gonna take you through deploying policies um, using policy controller and uh, then some of the dashboards that are available to you. So um, our agenda, we're going to, like I said, we're going to kick off here. We're going to spend just about uh, 10 minutes on this next section. And then we're going to go through the first hands-on lab, kind of, like I said, broken into two parts. And then we'll take you through that. Um, and then we're going to give you a break. Of course, if you get through the first section uh, a little ahead of time, uh, take a break. If you need to take a break at any time, feel free. The lab is written out for you step-by-step. -step, so if you have to step away for a few minutes, you can certainly come back and catch up. Uh, then we're going to go ahead and talk about the policy management, and then we'll close, uh, you know, around 10 after the hour um, in, a, in our final bit of time to take questions, um, talk about some next steps. Uh, you could you can go on your journey with Service Mesh, and um, and then uh, that'll be it. Um, I think the labs are going to run. Uh, the timer on the lab is eight hours. So once you start it, you you don't have to get it finished in this time if you have to step away, right? I think it's, what is that the timer on the labs? Yeah. Or, yeah, whatever. You'll see the timer on the labs. Um, and then, all right. So Anthos Service Mesh, if you think about Kubernetes, um, we have Google Kubernetes engine on Google Cloud, and that's based on open source Kubernetes. Um, and so Istio is, has that same sort of relationship, right? Istio is the underlying service mesh that powers Anthos service mesh. So Anthos service mesh, um, and while the name apply, implies that it runs on Anthos, it actually runs on Anthos and it runs on GKE clusters, right? So you'll be using GKE clusters today as, um, uh, in the lab. So I wanted to break this up into, you know, three kind of tiers when you look at the architecture of the Istio offering and, and then talk about how ASM implements those tiers. So if you think about the first layer is sort of the mesh services with your certificate authority, right, handled by Istio D and your, your dashboards, if it's Kiali or Grafana or whatever it is that you've integrated in to get some observability and some tracing, right? So that's that first layer. And then you have your control plane, of course, uh, managing all the communications and, and whatnot. And then the data plane of the proxies and the sidecar. So if you take those three levels, then we'll compare each of them to what how Anthos Service Mesh incorporates them. Now, we're not gonna spend a lot of time in this workshop on what is a service mesh. We're assuming that most people know that. Um, uh, if you don't, no worries. You can still go through the lab. Like I said, it's all step by step. Um, but uh, we're not going to probably spend a lot of time on that, right? So sidecar injection and those sort of things we're not really going to speak to today. Um, so I'm trying to get the slide to advance and it's being weird. 
All right. So as I said, we're going to go ahead and we're going to take and look at Antho Service Mesh and we're going to lay it off into those three tiers. So the first tier, if you think about the managed mesh services, the first is like we have an integrated mesh certificate authority that's built in Antho Service Mesh. You can integrate that also with external certificate authorities like uh the, the other one, you know, Google's managed, uh, Google Cloud's managed certificate authority, if you want to go that route, um, that can be swapped out. We've also got, and you'll see this in the lab, a bunch of service dashboards already built for you, right? So that we're going to integrate with um, our cloud operations suite, which used to be called Stack Driver, which is our logging and monitoring. We're going to integrate with that. We're going to, we're going to have that pre-built for you. Um, and it's literally like a single click once you get your, um, your, mesh up and running. And then beyond that, um, we have the uh, integrations with um, other tools like we're going to use uh, Policy Controller today to apply some policies. So there's another product called Anthos Config Management that is sort of like open policy agent gatekeeper type functionality. And that allows you to ensure that you have this consistency across um, your environment, right? And so um, all of that is out of the box there as soon as you set up your mesh. No extra work required on your part. On the control plane side, we actually offer um, a couple of different ways of doing control plane. First is like an in-cluster control plane where you actually deploy it, you manage it, you handle the versioning, all of the configuration, sort of like a very traditional um, implementation like you would see. But we also have, and what you'll be using today is a managed control plane. So in that case, uh, Google and our SREs and our team of engineers are actually running that control plane for you. And you don't have to worry about the, the, you know, a lot of the base security. You don't have to worry about the versioning and the upgrade control. Matter of fact, we were running through the lab yesterday and we were rolling out, the, a new version was being rolled out uh, into the regions, uh, version, I think, 112. And we actually saw our service mesh operating on two separate versions, depending on the region it was in. And there was full backward compatibility there. That upgrade was seamless behind the scenes. You didn't have to worry about it and everything just worked. So it allows you as an application operator or an application developer to focus on um, the stuff that adds value. And we're gonna take care of a lot of that underlying work for you, right? We'll talk a little bit about shared responsibility model and, and security as we go forward, but just know that a lot of that base work is handled by Google in the managed control plane. And it's, it's uh, literally like a couple of commands to get the mesh up and running. And you're gonna see that um, as you go through the lab because you'll actually build the mesh out. And then we have uh, the managed data plane, right? And so the managed data plane is, is an optional feature in preview right now. Um, and it basically, you apply a label um, into your cluster and it will handle the sidecar injection and it'll handle the uh, versioning of the proxy agents and all of that stuff as well. So it is, it is similar to the managed control plane in that, again, it's not something you have to worry about. Right. It just we just let we'll take care of it for you. Uh, makes it super, super easy. You know, version matching, backward compatibility, all of that stuff gets taken care of. And all of these features you're going to see uh, today. Well, you, we're not going to do an upgrade, but you'll understand that, you know, you really didn't have to do anything to get the mesh up and running other than issue a couple of commands. So the other thing we're going to work with today that I wanted to just spend a little bit of time on is this concept of fleets. And this is a Google Cloud concept where um, if you've ever looked at Anthos before, we used to call these environs, um, but it's basically a way to take clusters and group them together so that you can operate them, uh, operate on them as a single unit, right? So if you think about, uh, you know, canonical example for this is like, I've got my dev cluster, my dev environment and my uh, test environment, right? And you can put those machines in a fleet. You can apply policies against the fleet. You can enable features across the, the fleet. So for instance, what you're going to be using today are Anthos Service Mesh. Uh, you're going to be using multi-cluster ingress and you're going to be using, you're not using all of Anthos config management. You're actually using the policy controller, um, but uh, components of uh, the config management component will be enabled. And those are enabled through the fleet with one command. And then that feature is available to you to take advantage of, right? And so it, it allows you to, to treat these, these resources as single unit. That way, all your configuration and your application deployment and your feature enablement is consistent across that environment. And then we also are going to be leveraging this idea of, of sameness, right? So in our case, namespace sameness. So you might be able to see on that slide, uh, that graphic, we're going to be able to say if a namespace exists, 
in a fleet and it's the same across clusters, it's essentially the same namespace, right? So in this case, the, the front end namespace only operates on clusters B and C, but it's available on cluster A and it's, it's, all, it's all across, right? So you do that for both namespaces and services and it allows interoperability between your clusters um, and makes it really easy for things like service discovery and service access both internally and externally, right? So um, yeah, so that is the, those are the technologies you'll be lo looking at today, kind of the, the way we break down and, and you know, some of the things we feel like Anthos offers, uh, um, Anthos Service Mesh offers in addition to the base Istio platform. Um, and with that, I think it's on to Christine. Yep, thanks Mike so much for setting up the context for this workshop. So I'll be talking a little bit about the architecture, uh, some of the good to knows for your quick lab environments. So here is just a rough overview of the workshop architecture you guys will be provisioning at the end. So um, in the interest of time, we did already pre-provision your sandbox quick lab environments with some day zero items. Um, I'll talk more about this in a later slide, um, but just roughly we have three clusters that you will have already pre-provisioned. So you have, you'll have your ingress cluster here, if you can see my mouse. Um, and then we'll have also two workload clusters as well. And on the workload clusters, you will be deploying Bank of Anthos. So Bank of Anthos is a sample application um, and it's a public sample app. I put the link at the bottom there um, on GitHub and it's there, it's a web app emulating a bank's payment processing network. So it's pretty cool. You get complete mocked bank accounts with some, uh, the ability to complete transactions. Um, it's all fake though. And you can see that this is um, mostly Python and Java services. We also have two SQL databases, but for the purpose of this workshop and to showcase the multi-cluster setup with Anthos Service Mesh um, and how it's kind of like a one-stop single pane of glass control across your clusters, we'll only have one workload cluster with the ledger and the accounts database. So it's gonna be acting as the single source of truth. Um, so, like I mentioned previously, uh, in your quick lab environments, we've already had some resources pre-provisioned. Um, so, most notably, we have the GKE clusters already set up for you. So, the two workload clusters and the one cluster that configures your multi-cluster ingress, um, they are all in separate regions. We've also set up a firewall ahead of time uh, to enable pod-to-pod -pod communication between your clusters so that the distributed services across the regions can communicate with each other. Um, it's just like a simple IP block that's quite large. Uh, in production, you should use a stricter firewall rule based on your conditions and requirements. And then lastly, we also enabled some Anthos fleet features. So I just labeled there on the slide, Anthos service mesh and Anthos config management. Um, that's just enabling the fleet uh, communication between your clusters and just setting up some pre-provisioning in the back end. Um, and then now I'm just gonna take you through some good to knows before starting the workshop. So like I mentioned previously, please have your email address registered at googlesolutions.quicklabs.com. Um, without that, you will not have access because we set up a private classroom for all you folks. Um, and then I will send this, the actual classroom link in the chat to everyone. So if you do already have your account registered and you're logged in and you go to that ASM workshop Google link there that I just sent in the chat, you should have access and you can see your classroom. It's gonna be IstioCon 2022 Anthos Service Mesh ASM workshop. So you can click on that and you can click Start Lab. And then a little quick tip of mine that I like to recommend is to open your Google console in incognito mode, just in case if you already have a GCP account, um, so it doesn't log you off your actual account. So just right click and open it in incognito mode. And I will also be monitoring the chat, by the way. So the quick lab instances will be open for eight hours after you click start lab. So you can tinker around with it after you finish this workshop today. And the lab material will also be available for the next few weeks, I think until May 15th. So if you do end the lab today, you can also revisit it at a later time. If you have any questions at all, please feel free to drop it in the chat or even message me on Slack channel on the IstioCon workshop. I will be watching both. 
And without further ado, I'll hand it off to Nim. All right. Thanks, Christine. Um, okay. I am currently sharing my screen. I hope everyone, everyone can see that. OK, cool. Um, yeah, so like Christine said, go to that link there that she shared in the chat. And then you'll be taken to this page here. You're going to click on IstioCon 2022 Anthos Service Mesh Workshop. And that's going to take you to the actual lab. Um, just taking a little time there. OK, cool. Um, I've already gone ahead and clicked Start Lab. You're going to want to do that as well. Um, and it should immediately be provisioned for you, the uh, three clusters that uh, Christine was talking about. And yeah, and then like Christine said, the next thing you're going to do is open the Google Console in an incognito window. Um, I've already opened my window in incognito, so I'm just going to open it in a new tab. And when you do open that, um, you'll see that uh, your username has already been pre-populated for you. But if, if it's not there, you can always jump back into the lab and copy the username there and then just log in. And then the password is also inside of the lab. So let me copy that over and log in. OK, cool. And then just accept uh, this bit here. OK, cool. So we just logged in. I'm going to agree to the terms and conditions here. And then I'm also going to close the navigation on the left. So this is the uh, Google Cloud Console. Um, and yeah, so like I said, again, open Google Console in an incognito window. Um, so that part's very important. Um, so what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to go through the first half of this lab, which um, is technically self-contained. So this entire lab, you could, if you wanted to, just go through it independently without me hand-holding and without uh, listening to me. So feel free to either lower my volume if that's what you prefer. Uh, but just make sure you check in regularly just to make sure you don't get stuck uh, and that just to know that you're going at a good pace. Um, so yeah, so the overview section here basically covers what Christine already uh, kind of went through uh, with the diagram here. Um, so we're going to skip over that. And then we're also going to skip over this getting started with quick lab section. Um, that just basically explained everything that we explained about this start lab button and the open Google console button. Um, so let's, gonna, let's, let's go ahead and skip over that. And then we're going to head over to this open cloud shell section. So for the entirety of this lab, all the commands that you'll be running, you're going to run on cloud shell which you're going to activate using this icon up here in your Google console. Um, and then you're going to hit continue. And then hopefully the text should be big enough. I will make sure that the text is large enough for everyone to see. So let me know if that text uh, is hard to read and I can go ahead and make it bigger. Um, but yeah, so you can think of Google Cloud Shell as like a virtual machine somewhere in the cloud. It's got like five gigabytes of persistent storage um, and uh, it's tied to your account. So in this case, it's like a, it's tied to your temporary student account. And um, it's already got a lot of the tools, a lot of the command line tools that we'll be using today already installed in here. So we've got G Cloud uh, command line, which we're going to use to talk to Google Cloud. Uh, and then it's also got kubectl. Um, it's also got Istio CTL installed in here. So we've got a lot of the setup already done for us, thanks to Cloud Shell. Um, OK, so now let's go into the next section, which is preparing your environment. So in this section, um, we're just setting a bunch of environment variables. Um, the first thing we're going to do is copy the snippet over here, which is going to set the work directory variable and the project ID. Um, now, this step is very important because sometimes the project ID might not set depending on how you opened your cloud shell. So double check that the project ID has been set. And if it has not, then uh, you're going to want to go click on your um, project name up here and then grab the ID, copy that over, and then set it manually. Um, so just export project ID and then paste in your project ID. So this part is very important. Um, and then the next bit here is just downloading all the files and folders and resources that we're going to be using throughout this lab. 
And at this point, you'll probably see a modal pop up that says authorize cloud shell. You're going to click authorize and then the download is going to complete. Um, this might take a few seconds to wait for that to complete. Okay, so at this point, I have a bunch of files and folders in my home directory. Um, and the next bit here, we're just going to uh, run this command here that's going to set a whole bunch of environment variables that we're going to reference throughout the lab. So just run that command here. So this command here, um, what you're going to find is Cloud Shell, if you're inactive, it, Cloud Shell might disconnect you occasionally. Um, and if that does happen, you'll have to reconnect clicking on some button that shows up on the top right. Um, and when you do reconnect, you're going to want to run this command again to reset all the environment variables. Um, and I'll just take a look inside of this file just to see the various uh, variables that we're setting uh, and that we'll be referencing down below in the lab. Okay, so let's now jump into the next section, which is connecting to our GKE clusters. So if I look at my uh, cloud console here and I go into GKE and I look at Kubernetes engine, uh, what I'm looking at here is three different clusters uh, that have been pre-provisioned -pre for you. So you'll probably see the same thing. Um, and these are Google Kubernetes engine clusters, GKE clusters. Um, and we're just going to go ahead and connect to those three clusters. So I'm going to copy the snippet here. Let me clear my shell and paste that snippet in here. Okay, so it's um, adding an entry for each uh, cluster into my kubeconfig. And then we're just going to make it easier for us to reference back to those clusters later on by renaming them and shortening the names. And then I'm going to look at the, those new names uh, by listing my uh, kubeconfig uh, contacts. And you can see that we have the three clusters uh, connected to there. Okay. Um, so hopefully that bit is fairly straightforward. Um, and then the next uh, section here is just about installing Antho Service Mesh. Okay, so in this section, all we're doing is we're enabling Antho Service Mesh for cluster one and cluster two. Um, and we're going to do this declaratively uh, by applying a resource called the control plane revision. So this is this thing over here. And we're gonna apply that, uh, we're gonna deploy it into the Istio system namespace on both cluster one and cluster two. Uh, so let's go ahead and create that namespace. So copy this first snippet here, which is creating the Istio system namespace. Okay, so there we go. The namespaces have been created. And then I'm going to now deploy that control plane revision resource to both cluster one and cluster two. So uh, there you go, it's been deployed. And this bit takes about 10 minutes. Uh, it takes about 10 minutes for the control plane revision resource to actually provision Antho service mesh uh, inside of cluster one and cluster two. Um, so in the meantime, let's take a look at that uh, resource that we actually provisioned. So let me cat uh, Istio system. So that's the folder. Uh, and then the control plane revision manifest. Okay, so with this control plane revision uh, Google Cloud custom resource definition, what you're saying is what you're telling Google Cloud, hey, make this specific revision or type of control plane available to the workloads on my cluster. And in, in our case, we're saying we want the managed control plane. So um, so that uh, you have the manage, so now that you have the manage control plane enabled, you no longer have to worry about SDOD. You don't have to worry about scaling your control plane as your service mesh gets bigger. Um, you also don't have to worry about reliability issues because at this point you literally have like an engineering team at Google handling all this stuff for you. And you also don't have to worry about upgrading your control plane and keeping up with SDO releases. Um, but yeah, speaking of upgrades, uh, this bit here is kind of important. Here we're specifying what's called the release channel of 
our control plane or the release channel of Anthos service mesh. Um, and there's actually three different options. Um, if we look back at the lab here, but it's been explained here, we have a rapid channel, we have a regular channel, and we have a stable channel. And this basically determines how quickly your mesh is upgraded when a new Anthos service mesh release is available. Um, and so yeah, that, that bit is uh, fairly important to take note of. Um, so yeah, while we wait for Anthos mesh uh, to get pre-provisioned, I want to quickly reiterate a note that I made earlier above about the source bars command. Um, make sure if you do get disconnected from Cloud Shell and you have to reconnect, you do have to run this again. So that's something to keep in mind throughout the entirety of this lab. Also invite any questions. If anyone has any questions at this point, this is a good time to ask them as we wait for Anthos service mesh. There was a question early in the chat. So does each cluster get its own managed cluster plane? I'm guessing they meant control plane. Right. Um, so that, so, so for each of the clusters, you do have to independently enable them. And that's why we apply that resource to both clusters. Um, so over here, when we actually apply the control plane revision, we actually apply it to the cluster. Cool. So yeah, in, in our case, actually, um, we're not enabling uh, it in the third cluster that we're going to be using in this uh, lab. So if I look back at this uh, architectural diagram, um, we have two GKE clusters. Uh, we've enabled it on this cluster here on the right and the one in the middle. Uh, and then this third one up here, we're just going to use it for something completely different, which you'll see in the, the lab later. Okay, I am now going to check if um, ASM is ready or Antho Service Mesh, and more specifically, the managed control plane um, is ready in cluster one and cluster two. So there's the command in here, um, the hub mesh describe command. That's going to show us the status inside of each of our three clusters. And you can see that here, um, we have three sections, one for each cluster. Um, and you can see in the description here, it says revision ready for use, ASM managed. Um, and you can see that also reiterated for the, the cluster here. And then this is the third cluster, which we haven't enabled managed control plane for. Okay, so now we can move on with our lab. Um, so this section, this next section, is going to enable service discovery across cluster one and cluster two. And to do this, we're going to install a command line tool called ASM CLI, Anthos Service Mesh uh, Command Line Interface. And we are going to download it. And then we're going to run this command here. So just copy that over and paste it. OK. so. Um, that's going to take about two minutes. And if anyone's familiar with setting up multi-cluster service discovery on just raw Istio, uh, you're probably familiar with the Istio create remote secret command, Istio CTL create remote, remote secret. Uh, and that's essentially what's happening in the back here. Uh, it's creating two secrets, one in cluster one and another in cluster two, such that the, each cluster has access to the other clusters Kubernetes API server. Um, and in our example, we're just doing cross-cluster service discovery with two clusters, but you can obviously do that with much more, uh, many more clusters. And this command, technically, uh, you would even use this to uh, connect clusters from other service pro providers. So if you have like an AWS cluster, you would uh, use the same command to enable service discovery across a GK cluster and an AWS G, uh, Kubernetes cluster. Um, so yeah, while that's installing, I'm going to just double check the chat. Cool. I think, yeah, thanks, Mike, for addressing those questions. OK, so it looks like we have uh, just finished enabling cross-cluster service discovery. 
So we can now move on to the next section, which is just deploying the Bank of Anthos app. Um, so we're going to actually deploy all the resources for the app itself inside of a namespace called Bank of Anthos. Um, so let's go ahead and create that namespace. And that's the very first command in that section. So I'm going to copy it over and paste. And then we are going to then uh, label the namespace with uh, this Istio IO revision ASM managed label. Um, and that's basically um, letting us use the managed control plane inside of this namespace so that now whenever a deployment or uh, when a, whenever a pod is deployed, um, uh, the managed control plane is going to automatically inject an Envoy proxy to each workload in the same space. Uh, but yeah, so far we've only been talking about managed control plane. Um, this next command here is going to enable the managed data plane. So I'm going to copy that over and paste it. Um, so that's this, this annotation here, um, mesh cloud Google dot com proxy managed true and that's uh, annotated on the namespace as well and this is going to uh, enable the managed data plane which is going to take care of updates uh, upgrades to our proxies um, so that means you don't have to wait till deployments and pods organically restart for their um, associated proxies to get upgraded this will it'll uh, the managed data plane is going to take care of that for you um, without a, a, in a non-breaking manner. Okay, so we enabled that. Now I'm going to deploy Bank of Anthos, uh, the Bank of Anthos resources. So let's copy that snippet over and paste it here. Okay, and that's going to take a bit of time. There's a couple of resources for each of the different services. And then once that's done, what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at all the pods uh, inside of the first cluster inside of the Bank of Anthos namespace that we're currently working with. Um, so that's that command there. And you're going to see that uh, the various pods are starting to initialize. And uh, we've already got some of them running. It's awesome. Um, and you're also going to notice in the ready column the denominator is two. And so this is this two is actually referring to the two containers that each deployment is uh, made up of. One, the actual Bank of Anthos microservice container, and then also the Envoy proxy container, which uh, is being auto-injected uh, by managed uh, and, uh, the managed control plane and the service mesh. So while we wait for uh, these deployments to settle, we're going to take a quick look at Bank of Anthos again, uh, just to reiterate some of the things that Christine said. Um, so if I look at the diagram here, there's actually one, two, three, four, five, six stateless microservices here. Um, and then you also have an additional stateless microservice, which is the load generator, which we've also deployed to both clusters. And that's just simulating uh, user to front end traffic. And then we also have these two stateful database database uh, services, which we're going to only run in cluster one. So let's go ahead and delete it from cluster two. And there's a command to do that. It's I believe it's down here. Yeah, there you go. So. We're just going to delete the stateful sets named accounts db and ledger db from cluster two. So let's copy this over. Okay, so that's been deleted. And let's go ahead and see how our pods are doing. There's a command up here that's going to list both the cluster two and cluster one's pods. Um, but let me actually do that. From here, yep. So this this command here. So let's, let's check out the status of our pods. Okay, yeah. So awesome. So everything is running, 
And the nice thing is you'll see that there's a, uh, an instance of every single uh, micro, a Bank of Anto service inside of the first cluster. And the same is true for the second cluster, except we've deleted the database services from the second cluster. And um, the, ser the services here is, are still working fine, uh, even without the database, because we've enabled cross-cluster uh, cross communication or cross-cluster cross service discovery. Um, so uh, this actually, let's end this section with this final command here, and that's just creating a virtual service for the front end, uh, the front end services of each cluster. Um, so let me actually copy that properly. So let's go back, copy this command, and clear my terminal. I'll paste that over. Okay, so that's been created, and that's just going to later allow us to ingress traffic public traffic into our front end services uh, running on um, both clusters. Okay, so I guess we've seen some proof of cross uh, cluster service discovery based on the fact that the uh, pods in the second cluster are still up and running. But let's actually take a closer look at one of the front end deployments. And more specifically, we're going to look at the Envoy proxy uh, of that front end deployment. So that's what this command is doing here. And we're going to look at the front end uh, pod inside cluster one. And we're just basically saying, show me all of the endpoints uh, that are visible to that front end, uh, front end uh, proxy. And you'll see that there is basically an entry for every single service that we've deployed including the services from cluster two. Um, and then you can also see an indication of the two different clusters. If you look at the IP address column here, um, you'll see that th this set of uh, endpoints is from cluster one. And then this set of endpoints is from cluster two. And you'll see that there is obviously um, two of each of the stateless clusters. So user service here, that was deployed to both cluster two and cluster one. Uh, and yeah, it's visible and uh, available to the front end uh, pod of cluster one. So that's awesome. Now we have cross cluster service discovery. Uh, we're getting somewhere here. So let's, let's, keep, let's keep the momentum going. Um, the next section is just about deploying our uh, an ingress gateway to allow ingress into our front end uh, to our front-end services on both clusters. And all the resources in this section are just going to be inside of this uh, ingress gateway namespace. So if I echo this variable here, it's going to be inside of a namespace called ASM ingress. And let's go ahead and create that namespace. So that's what the first snippet here is doing. Copy that over. And then we're also going to, like we did before, uh, with the Bank of Anthos namespace, we label this new namespace with the istio.io revision label so that it can be part of the service mesh. So let's go ahead and copy this and paste it in there. Okay, so the two namespaces or the, the namespace in the two different clusters has, has been uh, labeled. And then we're also, uh, just like we did before with the Bank of Anthos namespace, we're going to annotate uh, this namespace uh, such that the managed data plane is enabled. And that's what this bit here is doing. So let's copy that. Okay. Um, so again, what the sidecar, uh, so what, what the Anthos service mesh managed data plane is doing is it's going to make sure that the sidecars that are automatically injected are also now upgraded by Anthos service mesh. Okay. Um, so yeah. Um, and then now that we've labeled our namespace, I'm going to go ahead and deploy the ASM ingress in uh, both clusters. Okay. And then this resource that I applied 
to, it's actually a bunch of resources. We'll take a look at it in a bit. Um, this is going to get assigned an, a public IP address by Google Cloud. Um, and then we're also going to deploy a basic Istio gateway object into both clusters. Okay, so again, while we wait for the IP addresses to be assigned to each of the ASM ingress gateways, let's go ahead and take a look at the contents of the ASM ingress gateway resources or the manifests. Okay, so we've just uh, deployed a bunch of different uh, Kubernetes resources. Um, and then there's also this uh, service resource tied to the ESM ingress gateway uh, deployment of each cluster. And this is the thing that's going to get a, an IP address generated uh, by Google Cloud. And you'll also see in the deployment of the ASM ingress gateway for the container, we, we've actually specified an image value of auto. And this, this is because the, the actual container image for the ingress gateway deployment uh, is just going to be automatically um, set to some value by Anthos service mesh. And you make that possible uh, with this uh, with this annotation here. Um, so every time this this pod or this deployment restarts, or uh, if, if it starts for the first time, it's going to uh, look at Anthos service mesh and Anthos service mesh is actually going to set this uh, container value, uh, this image value. And because we have the managed data plane enabled, uh, this also means that the upgrades to this container will also be taken care of by Anthos Service Mesh. Um, so you no longer have to worry about that. Okay, so um, hey, I guess a, a, another thing to note about this section is all the resources that we deployed were in its own namespace. And uh, most of y'all are probably familiar with this, but in Kubernetes namespaces, we like to use them to think about splitting resource ownership into different teams. And in, in our case, we're illustrating exactly that because the, the gateway uh, resources that we've deployed here are typically owned by the platform admin or the network admin teams. Um, and yeah, so that's, that's sort of what we're illustrating here. Um, so let's, yeah. Okay, so I think our public IP addresses should be ready. So we can go ahead and check that using this command here. Um, so let me copy that and paste it. Okay, yeah, so we have our public IP addresses for each of the ingress gateways, and we can now go ahead and visit our uh, URLs. If you want, you can just copy it over from here. There's also this convenient uh, command that Matthew has prepared for us, which I'm going to copy, and it's just going to echo out uh, a URL that you can click on. And then there we go. We have Bank of Anthos deployed at one of the IP addresses, and then I'm going to check the other one as well, so the second one here. Okay, cool. And it should be fully functional uh, on both of them, so let's go ahead and test that. Let's go ahead and uh, sign in and deposit some funds, maybe $10. Okay, so refresh that works. Um, the data persists. Um, and then we can go ahead and check the other IP address, uh, visit Bank of Anthos on that IP address, and then we'll see if the data is consistent across the two. Um, so that's again proving our ability to allow um, service discovery across two clusters. And then the cool thing about this is if we go up to the very bottom, let me just zoom in here and look at the footer. It's the footer is actually going to tell us which pod, which Kubernetes pod um, uh, handled this request. Um, and it's also going to tell us which zone that pod was in and which cluster. So if I keep refreshing this, there we go. So the, the pod and the, the cluster and the zone value just changed from uh, the cluster one to cluster two, which is in central. So let me keep refreshing that just to 
Okay, there you go. So now it's West again. So what's happening here is the Google load balancer is directing it to either uh, front end service. Um, so we've already got load balancing working for us. So that's awesome. Um, and now we're just going to very quickly visit everything that's that we've done so far. Okay, so that's the diagram here. Um, so, so far, let me zoom out. We've only dealt with cluster one and cluster two. So we've only been playing around with two clusters. We have a Bank of Anthos namespace on both clusters and we've uh, deployed the Bank of Anthos services inside of those two clusters inside of that namespace. And we also have uh, them working together with the cross cluster service discovery. And then on top of that, we're using a separate ASM ingress namespace we've, where we've deployed uh, an ingress gateway deployment in both clusters um, and we're able to ingress traffic ingress public traffic to the front end service through those ingress gateways um, and then also the the that public traffic the ip address it's actually tied to the google cloud load balancer um, which is helping us uh, balance the the ingress between the two front end services on the two different clusters. So yeah, that's, that's amazing. So let me zoom back in here. Um, and then the, the next, the next part here, we are actually going to configure something called multi-cluster ingress using the multi-cluster ingress controller. It's just a separate Google cloud, uh, cloud feature. Uh, that's also going to allow us to use load balance user to front end traffic across the two clusters. Um, so, but to use this feature, we first have to enable multi-cluster ingress on the third cluster. Um, so let's go ahead and do that. So copy that first command, paste it in here, and this should take about a minute or so. And while that's uh, kicking off, we can maybe talk a bit about the two uh, custom resource uh, definitions that we'll be working with. So something called the multi-cluster ingress and multi-cluster service. Now, you can think of this as like the basic uh, Kubernetes ingress object and the, the Kubernetes service object. Um, so it's, it's very much analogous to those two fundamental Kubernetes uh, resources. And, and the ingress is tied, always tied to a service and the uh, service is tied to a deployment. So then in our case, what we're doing is we're deploying both the resources on the third cluster. Um, so if we look at our diagram here, um, these resources are gonna live inside of the third cluster and it's going to configure, uh, uh, load, it's gonna point to load balance traffic into the, the front end services in both uh, uh, cluster one and cluster two. But it's actually going to uh, point to the ingress gateway instead of directly to the, the front end, uh, uh, front end services. Okay, so I think we gave it enough time for the feature to become enabled. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, I guess first we need to double check that it's been enabled. Uh, so we can write in this describe command and yeah, there you go. So it does say that the multi-cluster ingress feature has been enabled for this cluster that that's the third cluster. And then the next command here is creating a namespace for us to deploy these two uh, resources into. So let's go ahead and create that namespace. Okay, cool. Uh, and again, we're using the ASM ingress uh, namespace. This ties back to what Mike was talking earlier about uh, namespace sameness. Um, so when, when the, the multi-cluster service points to a deployment if that or a bunch of deployments it has to uh, uh, be a deployment uh, in this same namespace um, and that's essentially what we're doing here um, and then we are good to actually deploy those two resources so let me copy this command here and deploy Okay, so what we've just done there is deploy the multi-cluster ingress 
and multi-cluster service into the third cluster. And um, what this actually does is inside of the other two clusters, it's going to create a what's called a headless service. Um, and then we can verify that we're using this command here. Yep, so what I'm doing is I'm checking cluster one and cluster two. And I see that there is this uh, service called MCI, multi-cluster ingress. And this is the name of the multi-cluster service. Um, and this is basically how the multi-cluster service is able to recognize the front end or the ESM ingress uh, deployments running on the other two clusters. Okay, so let's now maybe wait a few minutes for uh, the IP address to get generated for the multi-cluster ingress, but we'll also just double check that it is ready. So what I can do is just run this command here. Yeah, so it looks like the virtual IP address has been generated, but it's it's likely that it's still doing work to, uh, yeah, work in the back to set it up. So you will see, you might see a 404, you might see a 500 error while it's uh, setting up in the back. Um, so this might be a very good time for us to, uh, at least for me to check in on questions and for us to take a break. Um, so, um, I don't know, Christine, do we want to do our five minute break at this point? Um, let's take some questions first, because I think we're actually ahead of schedule. So cool. there's one interesting question that I answered, but I also want to just uh, echo for everyone else. So people were wondering if the multi-primary deployment for a multi-cluster um, is that, is the inter-cluster traffic going through Google's load balancer or um, or is it going through like the Istio data plane traffic? So it's going through Istio plane inter services communication across various clusters. They do not go through load balancers. Like Istio, you can leverage um, destination rules to set up your load balancing rules. Yeah, and, uh, and you, uh... Partly, um, and you actually uh, answered uh, the question, uh, Christine, but um, yeah, the cross-spot um, communication and service communication is very within the mesh, right? So it's spot-to-spot communication, even with the multi-cluster setup. Um, at the beginning, Christine mentioned um, for the setup, the pre-provisioning of this lab, you got um, a firewall rules in place where you are allow listing um, uh, this firewall rule uh, between two networks, right? Because here we are in two region, two zone, um, actually two region because two subnet, um, and we are allowing the traffic. So it's very uh, not going out on the GCLB perspective uh, regarding the question, but very like internal communication and through uh, an Istio configuration uh, at the end of the day um, behind the scene. Um, so hope that makes sense. Otherwise. Feel free to continue with the question. Uh, we have also other folks uh, happy to, to, to continue answering here. Uh, okay. There is another question about uh, auto, so the uh, auto label uh, ima image name for the ingress gateway. Um, so the person was mentioning uh, how you deal with uh, the version where it's coming from. Actually, um, currently you don't have control about the registry of the proxy, right? Uh, so it's managed by Google, uh, managed by ASM. Um, we have our uh, image uh, publicly available. Um, so auto will be auto injected for this ingress gateway as um, uh, in fact, like you will do for any proxy, right? Because at the end of the day, that's a, an envoy proxy, your, your gateway. Uh, but ASM will inject actually uh, with this two mechanism, will inject uh, this value of the container image and the version will be uh, taken from your channel version, right? Again, with MCP, Manage Control Plane, you have a channel and we are providing a link about which version we are at with regular, stable, and rapid. And we have the version and we are uh, dealing with that with a proper and uh, the specific version. And when your proxy will uh, restart, 
uh, or if you opt in like we have uh, in this workshop with MDP, with the feature MDP, which is Manage Data Plane, we will roll out and actually restart your proxy with the uh, appropriate version. So I hope it makes sense for the auto um, uh, registry slash image name and lab, uh, tag. Uh, what I could add as well, uh, we have a distro-less uh, uh, features and actually option uh, that you could use. So your proxy and your ingress gateway could also opt in for a distro-less um, image uh, if you uh, would like to have more security um, on that as well. Hope that makes sense. And I see there is uh, some question around uh, maybe MCI. I haven't uh, taken the chance to uh, go through the latest question. Nim, is it something you would like to discuss now or we could re uh, respond and answer offline? Um, uh, you. Sure, yeah, we can take that offline. Um, so one of the questions was about why we're using a third cluster to create the multi-cluster ingress uh, configurations. Um, and I'm not, I'm not sure if that's uh, the best practice, but I can uh, definitely see why you might want to separate it into a separate cluster. Um, because these, these resources, they actually have to live in um, uh, what's called the uh, configuration cluster. When, whenever you have, uh, whenever you use multi-cluster ingress or when, whenever you use multi-cluster service, service, one of the clusters has to be a, um, a, a uh, the assigned configuration cluster where these two resources live. Um, but you can, yeah, you can definitely still, um, just, I could have easily just used uh, cluster one or cluster two. Um, so that's, I guess, going to depend on like how, what your um, deployments and what your uh, multi-cluster setup looks like. So yeah, I wouldn't say, uh, I don't want to jump and say it's a best practice, um, but it might be, uh, on a case by case basis. So that's, again, that's a good observation. Um, is it Gregory? Yeah. I think also just talking through the multi cluster ingress setup again, that someone did previously mention that they want to go through that. Maybe just like high level going uh, in the Quick Lab. Sure. Um, so the Quick Lab, uh, so again, just to reiterate, we are using the third cluster for all the configurations related to the multi-cluster service and multi-cluster ingress. Uh, this thing is, um, what it's doing, it's not bringing in traffic to the cluster itself. Um, it's the traffic, it's still going to go straight from the Google Cloud load balancer, which, which is like distributed uh, all over the world um, and going straight into that specific, whatever, whichever cluster has been chosen to balance balance the, uh, or take care of the, uh, the user request. Um, and in the lab itself, all we're doing is we're creating a namespace um, in that third cluster, uh, which is equivalent to the namespace of the namespace that contains the deployments in the other two clusters. Um, and then we're going to deploy those two resources to cluster three, uh, the third cluster. And then we are over here, we're just uh, checking out the headless services that have automatically been created under uh, by the multi-cluster service in cluster one and two. And over here, we're just looking at the, yeah, we're waiting for the virtual IP address to have been generated, uh, which is pretty much where we were and then uh, and I guess you can see that on my end, the, uh, it is ready, um, the multi-cluster ingress. And you can also see again, the load balancing happening. If I just zoom in and look at the footer. Yeah, there you go. Just change from west, uh, from central to west. If I refresh it a few more times from central, uh, from west to central. And you'll also see that it's fully functional. So I can just deposit maybe 10 bucks. And then refresh. Cool. Um, so yeah, that that pretty much covers the first half of the lab. Um, there's also in sorry to interrupt. There's another question. Um, Antho service mesh works in the combination of GKE, EKS, 
EKS, AKS, and bare metal clusters? Uh, yeah, good question. Thank you for asking. So um, um, you're right. Um, one of uh, the key features of ENTOS in general is uh, the ability to manage different cluster uh, wherever they are. Uh, they could be on, pre on premises, they could be on Azure, on AWS, on GCP locally. Uh, and you will have the notion of deploying a GKE flavor over there or attach external cluster. Um, so good question about uh, is ASM and those service mesh one of the features um, on top of that? Um, uh, is, is it working with uh, the different flavors? So there is some um, um, caveat and uh, feature um, available or not. Uh, for example, for MCP, uh, currently it's only for GKE cluster on GCP, right? And um, what's interesting with this workshop is to show you this feature, manage control plane, manage data plane, again for GKE on GCP. Um, for the other flavor, what you could have with ASM and those service mesh is having your in-cluster um, uh, control plane, right? Like you uh, may have already with Istio, uh, Istio D in-cluster. So with its other flavor um, outside of GCP that will be um, as a setup with uh, in-cluster control plane. Uh, is it coming on a roadmap? Uh, I can't comment here uh, about the MCP uh, flavor for this uh, outside GKE and GCP uh, one, but ASM is working um, on the different flavor again. So good question. Thank you for asking. And hope the answer makes sense. Otherwise, feel free to ask and uh, uh, ask for more uh, clarification. And someone is asking for Azure. Uh, yes, a couple of options here deploying a GKE flavor on Azure. Or if you have AKS, for example, attached cluster is another uh, way to do that. Um, same for GKE on prem. And um, uh, so there is some capabilities here. Uh, again, ASM, not the MCP flavor we are seeing uh, today. Uh, MCP stands for uh, Managed Control Plane. I think there's another question we can take. Um, what traffic flows through MCI and what traffic flows directly from load balancer to the clusters? That's a good question. Thank you for asking this one. Uh, a lot of great questions. Um, so in this setup, uh, you're right, there is two public IP uh, on the GCLB exposed by the true ingress gateway. Right, so uh, that's one way to uh, reach the ingress gateway and the Bank of Entos application exposed by this ingress gateway, right? So that's one way. On the other end, at the end of the, this first part with NIM, what you did is set up MCI, which is generating its own public IP, right? So you have three public endpoints here, uh, but this public endpoint, will reach out to directly to the ingress gateway without going back to the public and GCLB aspect, right? So uh, you could get rid of those two public IP. Here in the setup, you still have three public IPs, uh, but good question. MCI will allow, and I see, uh, I remember one of the questions, what's the value proposition of MCI is to centralize one public IP and doing the round robin um, uh, for uh, your multi-cluster setup in its backend, right? So one public IP is, um, is, uh, is okay to route to these two ingress gateway. There is also another question that I just saw scroll when I was scrolling up. How do you guys do certificate management, key management in Google Anthos? Yeah, that's a Good question. So for the certificate uh, of ASM in general, um, I, uh, we need to ping, we have engineer uh, on the call as well. So uh, we will ping them and making sure they are answering this question. Uh, personally, I don't want to answer uh, with the bad uh, information here. Um, so we need to reach out and having this, uh, and this question answered in the chat. Thank you for all the question. Right, cool. Yeah, we'll follow up with any chats. I'll, I'm making note of them too. So even if I don't respond immediately, I will follow up, I promise. Um, yeah, and, 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 and just to make sure everyone, if your question was not answered or not well answered, feel free to re-ask. Again, we are monitoring and engineer will be on the call at some point 
Um, so uh, it would be our pleasure to make sure you have all your answer, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that resource that Michael sent in the chat does explain a lot. But if you have further questions after kind of going through that, please let us know. And then I or others can follow up with your question. Okay, well, I'm seeing that we are at time for the policy portion of the slide. So without further ado, Matt, you can take it away and I'll continue answering those questions in the chat. Wonderful. So just to make sure uh, you uh, could see my uh, screen. So um, let me, so um, like you, I have this uh, lab uh, instance for eight hour. Now it's maybe uh, six hour. Let me open my lab here, uh, six hour ish remaining. Um, and what we have done so far is this setup, right? With MCI, uh, one of the question was, hey, from this GCLB, I have three public IP. Yes, you're right. Um, but this one here will load balance and run Robin on the two cluster uh, here, right? Uh, and you don't see my uh, mouse uh, moving, uh, but on this diagram, what, that's what we have uh, illustrated so far. If we step back a little bit, and uh, actually my Christine and Nim did, uh, did an excellent job already to explain manage offer and manage feature of ESM and post service mesh. Um, two aspects here, right? Again, MCP, manage control plane, MDP, manage data plane. And um, what we would like to show you here with this uh, exercise um, in the lab is to show you um, the uh, advantage of such capabilities and features, right? Uh, here, you don't have any more um, to, you don't have any more to uh, deal with any Istio version, right? Here, if you have noticed, you don't know if it's uh, Istio 1.11 behind the scene, 1.12, 1 1.13, uh, uh, etc. Right. So this little exercise here is to show you that Google is taking care of security upgrade of this control plane uh, aspect as well as the data plane. Right. So what you could do here is um, actually grabbing this uh, this uh, echo command, and uh, if you go uh, here. Uh, there is this um, echo command and actually uh, a good exercise when you are disconnected uh, from Cloud Shell, uh, you could go uh, up like Nim mentioned, right? And uh, click on source, um, uh, source sh uh, and back to your Cloud Shell. And from here, and let me zoom in a little bit more here. Uh, from here, you could again, grab your uh, the pre-populated variable we have for you i authorize because i was disconnected so i'm doing that again um, so if i do my echo command i will have this uh, very uh, uh, cute uh, url if i click on this one i will go to the gcp uh, and google cloud console um, and what's interesting here um, that's a metric and a dashboard, a chart that you could have on your own, because that's where uh, you could see the actual version of your control plane and your data plane um, on different cluster. And like Mike mentioned at the beginning, currently, uh, because we are using two region and we are rolling out, Google is rolling out a new version of the um, MCP, Managed Control Plane uh, version in the regular channel. Um, you could see that one region is 1.11.8 uh, for both the revision, a revision here on the left, um, which is a control plane, and as well for the proxies. So I could see that in my mesh multi cluster here, I have some of my uh, control plane and data plane with 1.11.8 and other with 1.12.6. I may have and I may want more control, right, over the region and the channel. So like Nim mentioned, when you, uh, and one of the questions was, is it one MCP for multiple uh, cluster? Actually, no, it's one MCP uh, managed control plane per cluster, 
where you will opt in for a specific version, a specific channel, right, um, per region. Uh, so that's good to know. Uh, I hope you, uh, you, uh, you're getting some interest here. But again, here the point is you don't have to deal with any more any um, Istio control plane upgrade with Canary uh, scenario. We are your engineering team. Uh, Google is doing that for you. Uh, all the support and the availability um, on this control plane, as well as now for your data plane, where you could, again, opt in for this managed data plane and where we will actually restart your, uh, your application and your proxies, sidecar proxies. Now let's move on and having this other section. Um, that's enforcing policies, right? So uh, before I'm uh, talking a little bit and doing bringing some context here, um, I will just run uh, the, this command here because it will take about 10 minutes. So I encourage them to uh, actually uh, run this command here. So this, comp uh, this command is installing uh, one of the component we mentioned at the introduction, uh, part of Entos config management. Uh, the component is named uh, policy controller. So while it's, um, it's uh, installing, actually what you could do is run this second uh, command here, the watch command. And um, I will go back to more context and information about uh, what this component is for. So again, if I'm coming back to my cloud shell, I will have this watch command and we will be waiting and watching for around eight minutes. So um, uh, bear with me and uh, let's wait for, for this guy to, 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 be, uh, to be done. So here, what we would like to do and um, if you are uh, a user of operator or administrator of Kubernetes cluster in general, or even Istio, um, uh, what you would like to do is guarantee uh, that your apps operator or service operators um, are uh, putting in place and respecting uh, best practice with Istio. Um, in terms of security with MTLS, in terms of having the sidecar injection, uh, in, term, in terms of having authorization policy, for example, network policy, right? So you would like to have some compliance in place to make sure uh, your security posture is not bypassed, right? Uh, you have governance, again, policies in place. Uh, one of the aspects in Kubernetes in general to do that is to use gatekeeper, right? Um, so I'm just curious here, uh, while we are still waiting for um, uh, for policy controller to be installed, um, could you uh, drop a note? Uh, are you using already gatekeeper uh, currently in your organization, in production, let's say? Uh, so, um, yeah, if we could have more insight here, I'm... Uh, uh, I'm curious to know if uh, some of you are using Gatekeeper currently uh, in their uh, GK, uh, Kubernetes cluster in general, not specifically to GK. So uh, uh, while I will monitor the answer, if you would like to participate, uh, thank you for dropping the answer uh, in the chat of this Zoom session. Um, so what we would like to do is leveraging Gatekeeper um, to uh, have some policies and constraints uh, within the cluster um, to, again, um, make sure we have best practice in place and no one is bypassing the rules of our organization. Um, so we have this component, Policy Controller, um, uh, which is uh, leveraging uh, Gatekeeper upstream. Um, and here, what we are doing, actually, we are installing this component. And this component, Policy Controller, is installing uh, in your cluster um, uh, a policy bundle, a constraint library, right? Pre-packaged constraint template, if you are familiar with um, Gatekeeper. Um, Gatekeeper has typically two objects for you, two resources, a constraint template, where you define a Rego, OPA Rego, so Open Policy Agent uh, Regex Rego, um, where you could make sure about a certain object 
uh, respecting some rules you have. Um, does this namespace have, um, for example, a proper label, annotation? Um, are they using a specific image uh, registry for your pod? Right? So you have some rules that you could have and put together in a constraint template. And then you have the concept of constraint in Gatekeeper, where you instantiate this constraint template and you are asking for a specific uh, rules in this specific namespace for this specific object. Uh, and that's where uh, Gatekeeper and policy controller will uh, actually um, evaluate such rule in place in your cluster. Uh, here, uh, to simplify a bit the exercise, we are just deploying policy controller and the rules and the constraint and the constraint templates just in cluster one. But again, it should be done um, in, um, um, in cluster two and actually in different clusters, right? Um, while I'm talking, I'm double checking. Uh, so policy controller is already installed, so we could move forward, right? Um, but what I would like to, to, to uh, mention here is best practice as well to deploy uh, your policies and your constraints across your fleets and across your different cluster uh, could be to use um, uh, a, a GitOps mechanism, right? So you could do that with your uh, push mechanism if you are using CI CD with Jenkins, Azure DevOps, um, Cloud Build, Cloud Deploy. So you could push policies and actually Kubernetes manifest in different cluster. Uh, another aspect to guarantee that at scale you're deploying such constraint and policies uh, could be to use uh, GitOps, right? So maybe you are familiar with Flux CD, Arco CD, config sync uh, in, um, in, um, um, in GCP. Uh, so uh, again, best approach to deploy at scale the different policies here. Uh, to simplify the experience of the workshop, we are just doing in cluster one. And I see um, someone uh, telling us that uh, they are planning to use OP Gatekeeper uh, to protect uh, Istio structure. Cool, that's wonderful. I hope you will learn uh, some stuff uh, today. Um, so now we have uh, this policy controller component installed in cluster one, again with a prepackaged bundle. Um, and we have, we just released a few weeks ago, an ASM bundle, uh, which is typically an Istio bundle, right? So uh, for the person just mentioning you are planning to, uh, if you are a GK uh, uh, customer, you may want to leverage uh, such uh, cap capabilities, um, pre-built constraint template. One of the aspects as an Istio operator, uh, Istio and service operator or platform admin is I want to guarantee that my namespace are well uh, labeled and annotated, right? So uh, I would like to guarantee that any namespace in my clusters are um, capable of doing sidecar injection, Istio sidecar injection or ASM sidecar injection. There is three constraints to have in place. The first one you could see here is about um, making sure that any namespace has this label, right? Uh, the Istio revision for the cycle uh, injection. So that's the first um, uh, policies in place. The second one and constraint actually. The second constraint is about the other annotation you have been leveraged so far, which is the MDP, Managed Data Plane Annotation. We would like to guarantee and making sure all our namespaces across the different cluster are using this annotation as well. So that's another one, another constraint. Uh, the third one is if you are familiar with um, Istio is even if you have label for cycle injection on your namespace, any developer, any apps operator could bypass this annotation and label actually on your namespace by adding an annotation on the pod and bypassing the sidecar injection, right? And we would like to avoid that. So with that, you have a complete story with the three uh, constraints to make sure any uh, pod, any um, namespace will have sidecar injection within your mesh. Um, so what we want to do is actually deploying uh, this constraint here. So if I copy paste this command, 
what it's going to do is actually um, deploying the three constraints. Wonderful. If we have time, if we have questions, we could do a cat and display those files. They are locally on your cloud shell, so we could um, show the content of uh, those constraints. Um, if I have time, I may want to do that. Uh, but let's move forward uh, to go through the entire content of this workshop. Here, I just deployed again the three constraints in cluster one, again, for simplicity. Here, what I'm asking is, now show me the three constraints. Are they uh, successfully installed and deployed actually in my uh, cluster one? They are. And behind the scene, gatekeeper and policy controller uh, are um, uh, evaluating. Um, is there any uh, violation? So if you see at the result of this first command and you are invited to rerun this command to actually see if there is total violation, if there is a number. And you could see that I have zero total violation for the two um, last one. So for example, ASM sidecar injection here, zero total violation, same for annotation. And with the third time I run this uh, command to get my constraint, I also have the uh, result that uh, no one is violating the uh, label on uh, the namespace. And actually, Nim uh, did a great job uh, so far, and you did a great job because you deployed Bank of Entos namespace, Ingress Gateway namespace, and all of them got their label and annotation, and no one has a pod bypassing the cycle injection. So all good. Uh, we are good here. But let's say we would like to illustrate. So you remember when I mentioned, um, and sorry for the back and forth on, on the window, but uh, uh, what we are grabbing here is a little test, right? Now let's try to create uh, a namespace, right? So if I clear a little bit my window here, um, what I want to do is kubectl apply. But again, if you do kubectl apply from your local machine to deploy in production, I hope you don't do that, uh, but you are using some CI/CD mechanism or a GitOps approach, all of them at the end of the day will have this error. Why? Because when I create this namespace, I don't have any annotation and I don't have any label, right? So here, Kubernetes, via gatekeeper and policy controller are complaining and blocking my request. I can't deploy a namespace without any label um, and a namespace um, that I specified in my construct, right? Um, so that's uh, one of the parts here. And actually, let me show you one of the constraints maybe uh, just to make sure uh, you have some uh, clarification here. Um, so, you remember when I do a uh, get constraint, I got um, this uh, three uh, constraint here. And let's say I would like to see um, this one and actually What I could do is actually see the actual definition. I could do a cat on the file, um, but what I'm doing here is um, I'm excluding some namespaces, for example, system namespaces to avoid any, um, any error because thus um, system namespace are not part of my mesh, right? So that's why I'm excluding them from the evaluation of the policy, uh, but I'm telling gatekeeper and policy controller, please evaluate any namespace to have a dedicated and a required label uh, with a regex, for example, uh, because sometimes what you would like to do is having cost uh, center, uh, cost center, owner, or other label that your organization would like to have on a compliance and governance perspective. Uh, but here we are asking specifically to have this ASM dash manage um, is to a revision, ASM revision actually, um, for this specific uh, label, right? So um, that's uh, very interesting to see. I invite you to do some CAT and kubectl uh, describe if you want to have more information here. 
Hope that makes sense. And uh, you are happy to uh, put in place some policies and constraints here. Um, so again, we got this uh, validation here. Another scenario for Istio, and there is plenty, again, peer authentication, um, authorization policy, uh, network policy, uh, why not to complete uh, um, authorization policy. One of the aspects is now I would like to guarantee MTLS, so a secure traffic uh, and communication between my pod and my services within my mesh, right? Um, again, there is a bundle of three constraints and constraint templates that you could leverage and uh, actually uh, uh, do and write. Uh, one of them is having a peer authentication in your Istio system uh, namespace. So if you are familiar with Istio and this concept, if you put a peer authentication with strict MTLS in your Istio system, this strict MTLS setup will be for your entire mesh, right? Uh, so here we have a constraint double checking if we have this peer authentication object in the Istio system uh, namespace per cluster, right? Again, in this case, I'm just in cluster one, uh, but I should reapply that in cluster two on as many cluster you have. And here, what I would like to do, um, now I have um, guarantee and enforce uh, my peer authentication strict MTLS in Istio system. What I want to guarantee is no one should bypass and override these strict MTLS uh, capabilities, right? So here we need to do that at two other objects uh, and level, because here it was at the Istio system level. Now on any namespace, you could have someone deploying their own peer authentication, overriding the default one, right? Um, so here we are prohibiting disabling strict MTLS on any namespaces, right? Um, another way to bypass uh, the strict MTLS uh, communication per service um, is to have a destination rule. And here we are prohibiting uh, doing so, right? So with this three bundle, uh, you are guaranteeing that everyone will have MTLS strict within your mesh. So what we want to do here is deploy those constraints. But just before doing so, um, just to add up, we need to uh, tell Gatekeeper, so it's a pure Gatekeeper concept here, um, where um, um, you remember when I mentioned a constraint template, a constraint template in Gatekeeper world uh, is evaluating one object, right? A namespace, a pod, a deployment, right? Now here, what I want to do is on a namespace, I would like to check if there is another object. So you see there is a dependency between two objects. Uh, for that, Gatekeeper uh, allows to have a config file where you could uh, tell which object uh, could be uh, related and actually uh, linked to other objects. Here, if you do a cat on this file, you will see that we are adding a peer authentication object uh, and a namespace object for um, uh, be able to do that and actually be able to evaluate here this constraint. So again, I'm copy pasting this one. And if I do a cat, uh, let me do that actually. Uh, you could see. So it's deployed in cluster one again, and you see a uh, gatekeeper object config. Uh, and I'm telling that I want for namespace the ability to point and uh, refer to another object, which is peer authentication in this case. Going back to the lab, what we want to do now is actually deploy the three constraints we just mentioned. So copy pasting this uh, command here. Three constraints are uh, deployed. What I could do now, if I let uh, a little a bit of time, uh, is actually running this other command, right? You remember the get uh, constraints? Here I'm getting one object, one constraint. And I'm asking for uh, specifically uh, the details of a violation because on purpose, we have a violation here because if you remember, we haven't yet set up any strict MTLS peer authentication, right? So I need to rerun a couple of times this uh, uh, command in order to see the violation. So let's wait a little bit. Uh, Gatekeeper is evaluating um, my objects and my resources. Um, so while uh, it's uh, evaluating, 
actually the output should be this one where again we haven't yet set up for you and you haven't done by yourself any kubectl apply pure authentication strict mtls in the istio system uh, namespace right uh, that makes sense uh, now if i rerun this command i should have at some point yeah i have it um this violation right uh, so it's evaluating um, so you remember when I did kubectl create a uh, namespace test, it was before going to the cluster, but sometimes uh, people are asking, yeah, but what about the object in the cluster? And yes, um, Gatekeeper is evaluating that for you. Um, so I have this information here and let's fix uh, this information to have a more secure mesh, right? Because um, most of the time you would like to have this MTLS strict in place in your mesh. So clearing a bit my console here. Applying uh, my pure authentication, a uh, very Istio object that you may be familiar with or not, but typically that's this object here, pure authentication, default mode split. So in the Istio system uh, namespace. If I reevaluate my object and my constraint actually, I should see now zero, zero uh, total violation, right? So I move forward a little bit. I won't wait for this um, this command to finish. And you see zero, zero, zero. Perfect. Another section here, uh, what we would like to do um, is opening this uh, command and this page in the GCP console. Here you have a dashboard, uh, which is the uh, Ento service mesh, uh, security insight. Um, so here it's initializing. It's the first time I'm opening it. But here, um, if you open and click actually on the policy audit, what's interesting here, because we just mentioned MTLS, if you look at cluster two, which is central one, you see I have MTLS status not enabled. And I can see that all my uh, services are in permissive mode, right? But now, we did that in cluster one, which is West two. If everything was done correctly, now you see I have MTLS status uh, okay and successful, if I could say, because and secure actually, because everyone now is in strict, because we just deployed the pure authentication strict MTLS in these two systems. So all good on that aspect. So great insight here in the console. Let's move forward and continue. What I want to do now um, is some of the capabilities uh, for um, uh, monitoring and more specifically tracing, right? Um, so when you do microservices in general, and it's, um, um, it's uh, even more true with Istio and the different services you, are, you have in your mesh, um, you need some tracing capabilities, tracing mechanism in order to debug um, communication between your, um, your uh, services within your mesh, um, latency performance between uh, two services, uh, tracing information. So here we are uh, leveraging Cloud Trace. And uh, with the two commands I just uh, executed, um, in the two cluster, what we are telling to ASM and to service mesh with this config file, we are telling them, please, add cloud trace for any sidecar uh, proxy, right? So that's a little config. I uh, just want to accelerate a little bit to be able to cover all the content. You could do a cat on this file, that's a config config map um, to tell um, actually ASM and the sidecar proxy to send telemetry to cloud trace, right? Um, what I want to execute at this, at this stage is forcing the rollout, the redeployment of your sidecar proxy. So I'm doing this, you could run this command. And while it's uh, that, what I could do is actually here, grabbing this URL, this echo command, going back to my shell, clear a little bit my window here, and paste. And if I click on this URL, I will go and navigate to CloudTrace within the Google Cloud Console, and you see, uh, I have already some telemetry uh, just sent, right? Uh, I could do auto-reload. With that, I could see the trace uh, coming in. Uh, so I could just wait for one or two refresh. 
Um, I won't spend too much time here, but that's an important concept when you're trying to debug as a necessary service operator, what's going on, uh, what's the latency between two, uh, two services, uh, the stacks, uh, etc. Right. So you could have more information uh, here about um, inbound, outbound uh, communication. And you see, I just got a refresh with more uh, telemetry and trace in place. I just want to uh, move forward, um, and you could play with that. You have more access today and the, uh, during the two uh, next weeks. Um, just, what we want to, yeah, just sure. Just a few questions from the chat. So um, is this trace list similar to Kiali? So I have poked around Kiali a little bit. Uh, Matt, did you want to comment on that? Yeah, uh, good question. And if I'm not misunderstanding, Kiali is actually using Jaeger behind the scene, uh, maybe. So yeah, if, if there is Kiali pure uh, capabilities for tracing, that's uh, instead using Cloud Trace. So it's not using Jaeger either, it's using Cloud Trace. So yeah, uh, good question. Uh, that's the equivalent. Now, what we want to do, and thank you for uh, adding all those questions. Um, so here, what I want to do now, and we are going to have more fun stuff coming in. So uh, I see uh, the, the time here uh, going fast. Um, here we are going as well having this monitoring story, cloud operation. How I have visibility uh, on performance, on latency, on um, uh, 404 issue, 500 uh, issue. So. Um, are my, my services within my mesh across different cluster, or they LT enough, right? So I need to monitor uh, the entire mesh. With that, we are going now to cloud operation uh, and cloud monitoring, cloud logging, uh, and we are even going to do some SLO and Chaos Monkey uh, tests at the end. So bear with me here, uh, and I hope you will enjoy this part as well. Here, first uh, window, it's a topology uh, graph, right? So uh, people are familiar with Kiali um, uh, capabilities and features that you may recognize and have. I could have more information about dependencies, so my ESM ingress and load generator. Uh, like we mentioned, we are generating metrics uh, to the front end and the application, or talking to front end, and there is this different uh, communication here. I could also expand my service front end, which is cross namespace and cross cluster. And I can see that, yeah, I have two, um, two uh, front end pod and deployments. And actually, they are deployed into cluster, right? So that's where I could have more information on this notion of canonical service. Uh, front end service, where are you in two clusters uh, in this case? I could have some golden signal about request per second error rate and some metrics uh, to give me a summary of this of this part right what i want to do is going to uh, more detail about the front end service and you could see again a detailed view of a summary of this front end where you could see on the left here um, inbound traffic again asm ingress gateway and load generator talking to front end and having um, uh, the outbound aspect as well to the other golden metrics and signals. If you are familiar with them, um, how fast this service is responding um, per second, uh, CPU usage, memory usage, why not disk usage, uh, error rate, so golden signals and metrics very important to have. Here, I'm not doing customization of dashboard. That's out of the box, uh, out of the box, sorry. Uh, that you could leverage again as a platform and means service operator, why not apps operator? Um, let me check the flow of the workshop here. So we went through uh, the topology. Uh, there is this uh, view, table view. Uh, I won't go too much in detail here, but same as a topology in a table view. Um, and we just explore uh, the front end detail summary view. Now let's deep dive maybe a little bit with the metrics, right? Um, so from here, what I could do is going to this tab and section here. Again, I'm on the front end service metrics. And here I could have more information, right? And I could filter for the last six hours. So on a debugging perspective, 
That's where I have, again, great insight, great summary out of the box for me, grabbing the traces, the logs for me, uh, and helping me making sure I'm deep diving and debugging easily, right? Um, so I can see uh, the request per second, the error rate, the latency, request size, response size, again, more detail uh, that I could deep dive uh, um, to get more insight okay. um, and, and, and information. Sorry, just a few questions and seeing that we're still good for time. Um, can you see MTLS over the topology view? Uh, that's a good question. Uh, yeah, let me grab this. I know uh, you can quickly. do it in the tabular view. Um, here, you mean in the table view here? I think they meant the topology view. In yeah, yeah, yeah. So I don't think we have this here. That's a good question. Um, yeah, I'm not sure we have this here. Um, uh, here, uh, this topology and table view are more for metrics monitoring. And um, yeah, you're right. Uh, the, the place to see that, so good question, is very here on this uh, security insight uh, dashboard. So two, two places. Um, that's a good point. Um, but I'm not sure it's available in the topology. Mm -hmm. And then another question for deploying yeah. uh, Anthos Service Mesh, do I get to choose the underlying hardware, AMD or Intel? Oh, um, it's not for Anthos Service Mesh. The question is very for Anthos on edge or on-prem. Um, and sorry about that. I just want to continue my flow on, um, on Anthos Service Mesh Workshop. The question is very uh, the capabilities of Anthos edge and on-premises. Um, so I will let someone in the chat to answer this question. Great question, by the way. Uh, I don't want to avoid this question, but I want to continue the flow of ASM and to Sure, I'll Thank make note of it. Thank you. Um, so I don't know how much you are familiar, so please uh, feel free to have a, a note and answering this question. Do you have some SLO uh, in place and mechanism and tools to help you with that with your, I don't know, even if you are not using this tool, but let's say with this tool, do you have such metrics and alerts uh, on top of your services that you are able to define? Are you familiar with SLO in general, the concept of service level uh, objective, uh, an SRE best practice, service uh, readability engineering uh, best practice? So uh, if you are using them today, uh, feel free to drop a note. Otherwise, uh, I hope you will learn uh, some stuff here. What we want to do in this define SLO and alert section is actually defining based on a customer or user journey, which is I'm going in the front end, right? So pinging my front end of my Bank of Entos application and website. I should be able and measure the availability um, of my uh, list of transactions, right? So if I go here, when I refresh this page, one, you, you just pick up and choose one of the three public IP addresses you have uh, provisioning, provisioned so far. And one of the customer user journey, I would like to measure and guarantee that there is availability, um, is listing this transaction history, right, on the front end page. So what we want to do with this exercise is defining an SLO on this customer user journey. Um, um, so what we want to do is go to uh, copy paste this echo command, go back to your cloud console, and here you will click on this link. What we are go go uh, going to do is uh, going back to the front end detail view, and actually um, another view, you remember this one overview here, the overview, now I'm going to add. And that's where I will be able to create an SLO. So here we are helping you in this concept and context actually of ASM and to service mesh to help you define your SLO based on your Istio and, and to service mesh service, right? So I won't go too much in detail about what's the difference between availability versus latency. You could have custom um, uh, criteria for your SLI. Again, I won't go too much in detail about what is the difference between SLI, um, service level indicator versus SLO, service level objective. 
um, uh, we have some reference, uh, some free ebook about SRE, uh, which are going to explain that better than me. Um, but um, what we want to do is, is leveraging uh, this very uh, interesting wizard, uh, helping you to create such SLO. So you don't need to be, again, an expert in SRE um, to be able to do that. So I hope we will demonstrate that. Um, here, what you want to do is latency. Uh, bear with me, follow this guide, because we are doing some Chaos Monkey um, uh, setup right after the definition of this SLO. So uh, follow along and please select the, uh, this option if you want to see some alerts and uh, very interesting uh, uh, SLO burn rate alert. So here I'm selecting lat latency. I'm keeping request based. I'm, continue, I'm continuing on this uh, dashboard. What is interesting here is uh, this dashboard is helping me for um, uh, the historical data of the traffic. So we may want to have a, a longer run, right? One month, one year of services running. Here is just one hour-ish, right? So it's not enough data, historical data, but uh, that should be the trick. But it's helping me uh, because you know your service. Uh, but here we are helping you to tell you about um, what's the latency currently of your service, right? For the last one hour, for example, right? So you could have more insight, but here we are helping you, help, helping you with this preview, right? Uh, I could see that um, I'm below um, uh, this uh, number here, 750 milliseconds, right? So I will pick up and choose this one. Here, what I want to do is a rolling operation, compliance period, actually. So uh, select rolling instead of calendar. Um, best practice is to have on a month, 28 days. Again, I'm not going too much in detail about the concept. I just want to demonstrate how easy uh, it is for you to leverage that. And what I want to do on this SLI I just uh, defined, now I have an objective. And the objective is to have 99.9 uh, uh, percentage of availability, right? Um, I have quite a, a preview of that. I could uh, review and save. Um, what's interesting here, it's a JSON payload uh, that you could grab as a file and automate this wizard creation. So it's not just done by UI. You could do that with Terraform or any API to actually create such a SLO. So um, you could repeat that for all your microservices um, within your mesh, for example. I will click on Create SLO. And here, I have already an error budget, right? Um, so I was uh, maybe too aggressive on my uh, SLO objective, 99.9. .9. So what I want to do here, it's a good exercise, um, maybe is having either um, uh, the latency here, um, and I hope I would be able to make it, um, so um, higher or just having a goal uh, maybe less aggressive and you see so 99.9 um, .9, it's x minute a month of downtime of this service um, and 99 it's x amount of hours uh, for example um, uh, of an availability of your service right so I'm less aggressive here and uh, I'm green so that's good what I want to do here is create an SLO alert, right? For the benefits of this demo, uh, we are going to have the loopback uh, duration set to one, right? So next, here I won't select any uh, notification uh, channel, uh, but what is important here is here we are going to have an alert and a dashboard showing those alerts, but what you want to do as well is maybe having some automation in place, right? So pager duty, uh, any webhook, any Slack channel message, any email, um, et cetera, et cetera. The more generic one will be webhook, could be cloud, uh, PubSub. So anytime an alert is uh, popping up, raised, they could notify a specific uh, notification channel that you could configure. We won't leverage this feature uh, today, but I invite you to, to play with that. So it's optional. Um, so I click on next. And I could have some documentation, right? Because sometimes you have manual email. Please do that to remediate this issue. Or you could have a webhook to actually trigger a script 
to remediate the issue by automation, right? So that's best practice uh, for SRE capabilities here. Uh, we are helping you to set up that. So here I have my alert, uh, define my SLO um, alert on this SLO. Right. What I want to do if I go back to the, uh, the workshop, uh, all of that is explained. So you could go uh, and uh, reproduce that by your own. So I just did that. I created the alert. Um, we are good. Now what we want to do is this section, generating fault injection and SLO burn rate alert. So if you are familiar with Istio, one of the great capabilities is uh, simulating some traffic between your mesh, uh, routing uh, capabilities. And one of them could be to add more uh, fault or delay uh, on a specific service. And uh, one of the objects to do that is virtual service. So if I uh, grab the, com the two comments here, I will deploy uh, them as I'm speaking and uh, explaining this subject, uh, deploying on the two clusters. Uh, and then here I'm doing kind of chaos monkey. I'm simulating some error. I chose uh, to do some fault. Uh, so if I describe and actually cut uh, this subject here and this file actually, you could see that this virtual service right, it's a virtual service from Istio, is uh, overriding my behavior of my transaction history um, and actually is injecting two fault. One fault is about aborting the traffic for 50% of the traffic and uh, responding uh, 500 HTTP status code, as well as adding a delay, a fixed delay, uh, again, for 50% of my traffic. So what's in interesting here, if pick up one of your public IP address and just hit refresh. It's working, but if I hit refresh multiple times, you will see a delay first and then this error message. So front end is silently and properly catching up the error message from transaction history um, because we just injected some uh, abort and 500 uh, HTTP status code. So front end is catching that and displaying uh, properly this message, right? So if you hit refresh multiple time, you will either get the list of transaction or the delay. So it's loading, loading, loading until aborting because of the rule and the virtual service we just deployed. Behind the scene, we already mentioned that we are doing a load generator. So behind the scene, it's generating a lot of metrics while, while I'm uh, talking here. And why it's important is because we may want to illustrate um, this dashboard and metrics uh, already uh, pre-built uh, for you out of the box, as well as see uh, the behavior of our SLO and the alert we just set. So let's go uh, back to the metrics of uh, front end. So if I grab this URL here and this echo command actually, going to my cloud shell, clearing this window. If I click on this URL, I will um, land and navigate to this uh, front end uh, view and metrics of the front end. And we should see, uh, right, it's 408 for me here uh, in Quebec City. Uh, and if you see, I, I'm starting to have a drop here on the request per second, right? So that's because I just uh, deployed my virtual service three minutes ago. So I need more time, uh, 15 minutes maybe it's enough, five minutes it's enough, um, 30 minutes or whatever. I should see a drop very, very uh, drastically here uh, for the request per second. I should have more error rate. If you see, I have already the latency going up because I added this very huge latency uh, in my virtual service, in my transaction. So the responsiveness of my front end is impacted, right? Um, so here I could see that there is an issue, right? I have my latency going up for the last three minutes, uh, so time of four minutes now. Um, so that's good indication and indicator and metrics here. Um, if you uh, go back to the lab, uh, it was a front-end perspective depending of transaction, right? So if I do the same for transaction, 
So I could go back here or click on the, the echo command and uh, generate the echo command. Um, and you see this red uh, icon. I will just illustrate quickly what it is. But I was on front end, depending on transaction history. And I can see here the so metrics of transaction history are behaving um, uh, like that, right? So that's a drop in request per second. So I have less requests per second because of error and latency uh, with this chaos monkey scenario. And I have also, uh, I should see, um, so this guy in latency won't be impacted directly because virtual service is um, uh, catching and uh, overriding uh, the response of this service actually. Um, so that's good indicator and information. Now, if I go back here, you remember the topology uh, versus the table view. Uh, you have some details here. And what is interesting is here. On the front end, because I set up my SLO and my alert, look at that. Even in five minutes, because we generated a lot of Chaos Monkey uh, um, failure, I already got an alert fire, right? And you could see the drop here for the last five minutes. If I click on the alert, I could see the view policy. And from the view policy view, I have more details. So again, I could deep dive and having more information about what's going on and why this guy is um, not going well, right? So uh, that's, um, that's an interesting scenario. I hope you enjoy this, uh, this demonstration here. Uh, I'm just double checking with the flow of the workshop if I'm missing anything here. Um, yeah, there is a view of front end I could show you deep diving on the alerting. Um, and there I could have some more automation again. Alerting is in my dashboard, but I could have a pager, duty, um, whatever, service now, ticket, uh, Slack uh, channel message. Uh, so more automation as well, triggering a run book, a playbook run book to uh, fix actually some, uh, some, um, some uh, issue I could have uh, on my infrastructure, specifically uh, within my mesh or my cluster. And uh, that's pretty much it. I hope you enjoy the entire journey uh, and experience of this workshop. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, pretty much sure I, I have seen a lot of questions. Uh, I hope they uh, got answered. And uh, we still have uh, 15 minutes around uh, about, right? So. Uh, we could uh, still uh, catch up on question here. There are a few questions. So someone asked, can I assume all Istio features are supported by, supported by Anthos? So I guess they mean Anthos Service Mesh. Uh, that's a good question. Um, uh, we have a page uh, um, manage. Uh, we have a page for that. Uh, there is some, uh, to be honest and transparent, there is some uh, feature not available, uh, but most of them are, yes, uh, but not all to be transparent and honest. Uh, the page uh, shared earlier by Michael is about security. And I think we are mentioning the, uh, yeah, we are mentioning on this page, um, so I'm just uh, copy pasting here. We are mentioning what we are not supporting. So some Envoy, uh, custom Envoy filter I have top on mine. Uh, we are not um, supporting yet. Uh, so I just share back um, uh, the link uh, where we have uh, the capabilities supported or not. All right, cool. Sorry, I missed uh, answering yeah, no the question, but thank you for clarifying the, the error with like. That, um, I can take the, the, the last one. Uh, sorry yeah, sure. to interrupt, Christine. Uh, can we have similar session like this with conflict management? Thank you. Great recommendation. Um, so um, you may be familiar with conflict management uh, or not. Um, we just use one component of conflict management, which is policy controller. So part of your answer, it was already the case, right, with policy controller. But yes, you're right, there is two other components, config sync to do GitOps, and another one, config connector, to deploy infrastructure via Kubernetes manifest, right? Um, good uh, point, good uh, question. Um, we may want to elaborate more on the GitOps perspective to make sense with this ASM workshop, 
actually we have material for that we have documentation for that but thank you for the recommendation uh yes uh, we may want to involve this one or adding another one and i'm pretty much sure we have already other one so uh, good one cluster config and service deployment yeah with config sync again GitOps approach uh, you could have flux cd argo cd or with Entos config management and GCP. You have config sync to do that. Deploying policies, application, and other Kubernetes resources. Very okay, cool. If there are still more questions, please drop them in the chat. I'm just going to be wrapping up the closing uh, talking points here, but we'll try to answer them as they come in. Um, so the next steps, what are the next steps for you? So I do have some resources that I will drop in the group chat um, just for things that you can explore. I know this was a, a fast and rapid taste of what ASM can do and also the different technologies that we've also touched upon. So like MCI, um, Anthos config management and how powerful it is for you, especially on a multi-cluster deployment, uh, which is really powerful. Uh, you can also follow Google Cloud. So we have Google Cloud Tech on YouTube and also on Twitter. We are continuously making new improvements and feedback um, and also just like announcements on our products in general. And then lastly, get involved with the Istio community. This is IstioCon. We're extremely grateful. ASM would not be where it is without Istio. Um, so here are some quick links. I know it's a lot. I also plugged in some of our um, GitHub samples that our team actively maintains, and then we are currently updating and always updating with new demos and, and labs. So if you are curious on getting a little bit more hands-on with the um, products, then you can check it out. And then, uh, yeah, I also put it in the slides. So if you have a copy of the slides, then you can check them out later. Okay, so yeah, Q&A time. If anyone has any Q&A, just drop them in the chat and then also, thank yeah. you so much, everyone, for coming out. Uh, we know IstioCon is a blast, especially with how many awesome um, talks there are. So we really appreciate everyone coming out to ours. And if you have any questions at all, I am on the IstioCon um, Slack group, and you can DM me or anything. Um, you can also have you can also reach out to us at email or on Twitter. Um, just a reminder that this quick lab, once you opened up this quick lab uh, session, it is only available today for eight hours, but then tomorrow it will be available for three hours. And then the lab itself, so not like the current instance you're on, will be available till May 15th. So you can end a lab and revisit it, or you, you can do a lab within three hours as many times as you want. And um, yeah, continue testing out ASM. This is a little taste, and 